Hello Space Cadets Morning. and uh, welcome to Let's Go Live. This is episode 12. I'm Maddie. Can you quite believe it? Hello, I'm Greg Hello. and all together now we are live. Yeah, uh, you can join us right here live from our spare room weekday mornings at 11 a.m. You sure can for a show packed with games and guests and makes and most importantly mm -hmm. you yes you are a big part of this show we'll be showing lots of your pictures during the during the during the show yeah and we love having you with us live let's see who is in the uh, live chat right now so um, you can get some shout outs we've too we've got kira and Alyssa. hello kira and Alyssa. thank you for joining us we've got olivia from japan that said wow olivia all the way from japan that's cool wow that's amazing tell us where you're from actually that's really cool uh, we've got uh, Noah. Hello, yeah, Noah, age seven. Noala we can see you. watching in Aberdeen. Katie and Emily, lovely to have you with us. Hope Noah you're enjoying as well. Space Week. So many people. Great to have you all on. It's it's going to be a fun and funny show yep. today. Just quick last one. Sure. Just spotted in Erin as well. Hello, Erin. Hello. hello. Um, yeah, hello. we're really looking forward to today's show. Um, but remember, all of our past videos are available to watch back. So do go take a look at those and make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And click that little bell because then you get a mm -hmm. notification whenever we put up a new video or whenever we go live. Should we tell them what's coming up today? Coming up today. Yeah. You go first. Go on, you go um, first. Okay, we're going to be doing some astronaut training. Yes, and we're going to get advice from a very, very special guest. Uh, mm -hmm. We're going to be joined, actually, by the winner of BBC Two's uh, Astronauts, Do You Have What It Takes, Dr. Susie, uh, Dr. Susie Imber. Yes. I haven't got my teeth in today, right? Have I? <laughs> And we're going to show you how to make some DIY rockets at home. Uh, and if you do want to try any of the activities or visit any of the websites or links that we mention in today's show, then just go to the description box of the video and you will find everything you need there. Yesterday, we learned all about the solar system. Uh, we made a map of the solar system that you can fit in your pocket. We were sent some amazing, amazing photos of you lot doing the same. Shall we show them some? Yes, you've been so creative. Uh, let's take a look at who do we have here? We have Elliot and Hafsa. Uh, they made a solar system out of fruit and an Easter egg. I nice can't wait job. for a chocolate egg. I cannot egg. wait for Easter. Uh, Amelie loves space so much that even her room is space themed. When she grows oh. up, she wants to be a vet astronaut. She knew every single answer to uh, yesterday's quiz. And look, using the trampoline there as uh, the as the sun. sun. Nice work. Vet nice work. Cool. Um, Abraham and Eli, they look like they had loads of fun making their little uh, solar system there. Sure did. Uh, here we go. This is uh, Annabelle. Drew her pocket solar system and loved learning all about the different planets. <laughs> Belle and Austin, they had loads of fun making pocket solar systems. So they went outside and made an even bigger one. <laughs> Good job. Um, this is George. Made a solar system out of chalk. Great idea. Yeah. Wants to be an astronaut when he grows up. And now Isaac made his own solar system by drawing and cutting out the planets. And his sister, Ilaha, made this amazing solar system model with her dad. Nice, nice, nice. A uh, few more then. Let's squeeze them in. Yeah. Jacob made this extraterrestrial solar system oh. using different size eggs just in time for Easter. Sophie's got her pocket solar system here with the biggest smile we've ever seen. Yeah, absolutely. And last but not least, you've got Rowan and Rurid. They painted their solar systems and they used finger painting to make the uh, the asteroids. Cool. They're amazing. You lot are brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Sorry we can't show everything. Yeah. Uh, we've just picked 10. Yeah. yeah. So great work you lot. If you do want to send your pictures from your space, from your mission space, um, this is the email address. Here it is. Hello. Let's go live at gmail.com. <laughs> I'm beaming today because I'm so excited about this episode. Um, so we are going on a mission to space this week, as you already know. Uh, yesterday, we had a look at where we might go. And so many of you got in touch and said, where should we go, Greg? Well, there were so many, lots of people for Europa, loads mm -hmm. for Jupiter, uh, but I think the most were split between the moon. There were yeah. quite a few for Earth's moon, uh -huh. but I think the most were Mars. Yes. So I think on Thursday, we are going to be touching down safely on, after we go past moon, yeah. Mars. Right. I'm looking forward to that. But sadly... It's not possible for us to just hop in a space shuttle and take a quick trip to Mars yet. Who knows? Maybe in the future, space tourism will be a thing. But no, right now, if we want to go into space, we would have to train to be astronauts. Oh, yeah. Now, if everyone is up for a bit of astronaut training, hit the thumbs up button if you're in the live <laughs> chat right now. And if you're watching back, do the same. Give us some thumbs up if you're up for some astronaut training. While we do, it feels like a game coming on, yeah? It's time for the quiz music. We're almost floating in space music, but we're not there yet. We haven't done the trip. <laughs> <laughs> I 
All right. <laughs> okay. Let's do this. What are, right. we, what are we doing? So today's quiz is actually a bit of an, it's an active one. It's going to be our astronaut training. And that's because training to be an astronaut is no easy task. So I am enrolling you, Greg. Yes. And you lot at home in the Let's Go Live Astronaut Academy. Right. Oh, yeah. There are going to be three rounds. The first round is fitness. Okay. Second round, yes. multitasking. And mm. the third round will be languages. Okay, fitness, multitasking and languages. Right. You ready with round one? May we. Okay, so That's we're actually, all going to yes. start with our fitness round, which okay. means we need some astronaut workout music, please, Greg. Astronaut training music. Yeah. Here it is. Great. All right, then. Okay, Greg, so I need you to get up. Get up, please. Okay. okay, you lot at home as well. Everybody on their feet. And we're going to do some astronaut training. So the first thing we need to think about is fitness. So why don't you do some side steps for me, Greg? There we go. That's it, everyone can be at home. And <gasps> stretch. <Yes>. Stretch. <gasps> Stretch. Oh, the other Stretch. You. There you go. So we need to strengthen our muscles and our bones because living in space, when you spend all of your time in low gravity, where you're just floating around, that, that can be really hard on your body. So we need to be strong and fit. So maybe we can uh, strengthen those it muscles. Feels like Maddie Motivator is back. She is. She's back. <laughs> Last week. Strengthen your muscles, please. That's it. Flex. Flex. <laughs> Very good, Greg. What are you going to do now? Run the spot. Okay, run. Faster. Get your heart rate up. Astronauts have to be fit and healthy. And now let's do some floating. Floating. Are we done yet? Yeah, we can stop there. <sighs> we can stop the music, but you can't you can't sit back down, I'm afraid. No. What? Um, because the next round of astronaut training is multitasking. Okay. So astronauts, they are tested on their ability to multitask. We need to know that uh, astronauts can do um, tricky things with their brain whilst doing other things at the same time. So they can handle anything that space throws at them. Don't know if I can do this, but All okay, right. sure. So what I'm going to do... If, uh, if, I feel actually, confident. Actually, Greg, can you stand there? Stand, or stand there so we can all see. There we okay. go. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to read you some numbers. Yes. You then have to remember... Remember that number, but repeat it to me backwards. Okay, do you think you can okay, do it, Greg? Got it, yes. But we're multitasking here, so I need you to do it while stepping from side to side. Or just keep <laughs> moving. Keep moving. Okay, okay, all right. All right, then. Let's do an easy practice. Greg, are you ready? I'm so ready. Are you ready at home? Okay. One, two, three. Backwards is three, two, one. Okay, you get the idea. Keep moving. Keep moving. And zero, three, six. Three, three, six, six. Three zero. How Very are you doing good. at home? They yeah, are. They're, they're doing good. great. Okay. Uh, keep going. One five nine. Five nine. Nine five one. Three one eight two. Three one eight two. Three one eight two. Two. Eight. Keep moving. Keep moving. Keep moving. One three. Very good. And then your last one. Five seven eight zero six. What? Five seven eight. Five seven <laughs> five seven eight zero six six zero. Come on, Greg! Come on, Greg! Ah, five seven eight oh, eight okay. seven five. Okay. Not bad. How did you do at home? So there you go. You're practicing your multitasking. Right. Your next mental challenge is, is uh, something called the Stroop test. Okay. Oh. Now this is where I'm going to show you uh, some uh, some words. But what I want you to do is I want you to tell me the colour of the word. Don't read the word itself. Okay, so if the word says blue, but the word is written in the colour red, I want you to say red. Got All it. Right then. But Got of it. course we have to multitask. So Greg, keep moving at the back there, and we, I'm going to put the Stroop test like on the, the screen who said now. I like I was skiing because I was stepping sideways. That'll do. But I had to keep down so I was in the camera shot. Really? So okay, we're going for a ski. Okay. So here is your Stroop test. Now you have to keep moving and say these as quickly as you can. I want the colour, not the written word. Okay. Go. Green, red, blue, yellow, blue, black, red, green, blue. I don't know what colour that is. It's brown. Brown. Blue, red, <laughs> that's tricky. Green, blue, yellow, black, blue, brown. Yes. Well done, you smashed that. That, that was, was easier than the numbers bit for me. I'm very impressed. Thanks. This is fine. Thanks. Okay. Are, are we done? No, 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 no. Oh. So the last part of your astronaut training oh. is round three. Right. And that is round three, 
languages. Ah. So astronauts, when they go to space, uh, they'll be with people who come from all parts of the world uh, and speak lots of different languages. So it's good uh, to know another language. And Tim Peake, he learnt Russian. So I thought we could all learn uh, just a very quick Russian phrase together right now. Okay. All right, so re- ready? You just yes, repeat after me. I'm ready. Okay. Me. Me. Nya. Nya. Let's put those two together. Me. Nya. Me. Nya. Me. Nya. Me. Nya. Great. And then we're going to say za. Za. Vot. Vot. Za vot. Me nya za vot. Repeat after me. Me nya za vot. Me nya za vot. Me nya za vot, Maddy. Ah. Me nya za vot, Greg. Okay, one more time. Me nya za vot, Maddy. Me nya za vot, Greg. Yay! What do we say? What were we just saying? Me nya za vot, uh, Maddy. That means my name is Maddy. Did it. How good's that? Did um, it. So that's it for my part of the astronaut training. Okay. Um, but actually, we've got a special guest who's uh, here with us before you graduate. So, Doctor, Doctor, I can't say it today. Apparently, Doctor is what we say these days. Doctor Susie Imber. Doctor Su- <laughs> Doctor Susie Imber uh, is is amazing for so many reasons. She's uh, an adventuress. Is she's an associate professor of planetary science, cool. which is a super cool job. Mm-hmm. Uh, and she was the winner of the BBC TV show Astronauts. Um, have you got what it takes? Which is actually now available on iPlayer. Yes. Uh, it turns out she really does have what it takes, and she has made a little film for us. Thank you so much for this, Susie. Yeah. Uh, giving her five top tips for what you need to become an astronaut. Thank you, Susie. Hi Greg and Maddie. hi everyone. I'm Susie and I'm going to give you my top tips for training to be an astronaut. Tip number one, study science and maths. Lots of astronauts are also scientists and their job is to do experiments in space. You can do your own experiments at home, counting the wildlife in your garden or looking up at the stars and planets at night. You can even see the International Space Station flying overhead if you ask an adult to check the time and point to the part of the night sky you need to look at. Tip number two, keep fit and healthy. Living as an astronaut up in space is hard. Do lots of sports like running, netball, football or rugby. It's hard right now because we're all staying at home, but there are plenty of exercises you can do in your own back garden or even in your sitting room. Tip number three, try new things and persevere even if you're not very good to start with. Yoga, drawing or learning a musical instrument will all help your brain develop new skills and you never know what your mission might be when you go into space one day. Tip number four. Languages are super important because astronauts come from all over the world. I'm learning Portuguese, so why don't we have a quick lesson? Hello in Portuguese is oi and how are you is tudo bem. Why don't you choose a language and learn how to say hello and how are you? Tip number five. Being isolated at home is actually great training for being an astronaut. Up in space, astronauts often live for months at a time in very small spaces. Learning how to get along with others in a challenging environment is all part of the training. So don't be mean to your brothers and sisters and try to be as helpful as you can. Well, that's it for my tips for how to train to be an astronaut. Enjoy your training, and maybe I'll see you in space someday. Bye. Thank you so much, Susie. Thanks, Susie. Yeah, she made that video for us yesterday. So thank you. We really, really appreciate it. That was awesome. Can we please now graduate? Yes, yes. yes. I can. I'm very, very uh, pleased and proud of you all. Uh, you have, in fact, graduated the Let's Go Live Astronaut Training Academy. Well done, everyone. Woo! Well done. And you have earned yourself your space badge. Oh, yeah. Would this be a good selfie moment? Yes. That, shall we, let's pretend we're in space. <laughs> okay. okay. Right. So All right. We're going to pretend that we're in low gravity and float around and you have to do the same. And this is going to be our selfie for the day. Ready? Brilliant. Okay. okay. Put right, someone then. in front of the screen. Get ready for the selfie okay. photo. All right, then. Where, how, how are you doing this? Okay. Um, I don't know. Okay, Apparently, right. John and Sophie are already learning Russian, though. Hang on. I'm okay, going to wait. Go up, okay. Three, two, one. Ha <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> All right, I hope you got that. That was hilarious. Oh, crikey. Oh. All right, then. So. Amazing. Oh, we've got people saying, oh, I'm learning the violin. Um, oh. Yeah, someone's saying they've been kind of spotting the stars and stuff as well and Look planets. Future Absolutely astronauts. Absolutely amazing. All right, Mads, what's next? Well, uh, if we've graduated... Oh, we get to show them how to design, make and launch a rocket. We do. Yes. It's rocket time. Okay. Absolutely. Uh, but first, we need to go back to basics. Uh, yep. I'm, I've got a balloon here. Uh, I'm just going to blow it up. Okay. So we're going to find out how a rocket works. <laughs> right. Get, um, hold your hand out for me. Sure. That's it. Away from the mic. Well, this will be very loud. Okay. Um, if I let go of this balloon, uh, yep. what do you feel on your hand? Um, <laughs> Always a giggle. Your spittle. But uh, <laughs> mainly, um, I can feel the air rushing out of the balloon and it's pushing on my hand. Right. So when you uh, let go of the neck of the balloon, the air inside pushes out on your hand. Okay. So what would happen if I let go of the balloon? There's a fun thing's going to happen. If you let go, the air will rush out and the balloon should whoosh in the air, up let's, in the air. Let's try it. So the air is going to push on your hand yeah. and that's going to push the balloon up into the air. Are you yeah. ready? Okay. Three, two, one. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we're not getting that back. Well, that All worked. That worked well. Yeah, um, okay. So that's great. Mm. Can we try it with a bigger balloon? Do you reckon a balloon that size will do, Greg? I think we should start inflating it and find out, Mads. Okay. Right. So while you're doing that... Oh, yeah, it's down there. Thank you so much. Okay. Yeah, here we go. This could be quite loud. So you, uh, if you've got sensitive ears, you might want to cover it. But what I'll do is I'll turn the volume down. Cover your ears, though, just on ready? top. Ready? Yeah. Keep going. Okay, hopefully you can hear me a little bit on top of that. Right, so the reason that the uh, the balloon flew up is because the air pushed down against Maddie's hand. And there's a, a guy called Sir Isaac Newton who apparently discovered gravity when an apple fell on his head. And he, one of his laws says that for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So the action down was the air coming out of the balloon and the equal and opposite reaction was the balloon going up. Oh my goodness! The more, but oh, thank goodness for that. All right, let me turn the let me turn the mic back up. All right. So the more air we put into the balloon, the more air, <laughs> the more air there will be to come out. <laughs> and hopefully we'll get a bigger whoosh. That's bigger than that's bigger than you. We could have used this for the sun and our scale model. Yes, it's still only half the size that sun would have been. So what All do right. you think is going to happen this time? Uh, well, I'm hoping that even more air is going to rush out and it's going to properly shoot up well it should stay in the air for longer as well hopefully it also depends on gas. the size of that neck okay. okay shall we do this everyone shall we do this three two one go blast off <laughs> Come back. that's hilarious no <laughs> i was knocking on the set over there to get it <laughs> listen to that noise oh it's on the camera <laughs> well i think we could <laughs> I think we can all agree that was a success. Wow, okay, well that was fun. Okay, oh, all right, so now we've learned really? the principle of equal and opposite reaction and gas coming out. Um, yeah. Relate that to a rocket for us. Well, but here's the thing, when um, when we launch a space rocket, there isn't somebody who, you know, <laughs> who stays there overnight slowly inflating it. That's not how it works. Instead, uh, a space rocket gets, uh, gets its gas, it gets its oomph from rocket fuel. And actually, I'm going to use... Oh, one second. do you want me to switch to yeah, this camera? There it is. So I've got um, a little Lego model here of the space shuttle. Uh, so this is a it's a type of rocket um, and this part here is the shuttle so actually maybe if i do that you can see a bit better and um, so this part is the is the, um, the glider it's the bit that the astronauts travel in and it is attached to these and we've got two rocket boosters and then we have an enormous rocket fuel tank and in here we have rocket fuel and when that rocket fuel burns it creates hot gas and that hot gas will rush out of the engines so it will come rush out of the engines it will push down and that will send the rocket up in the air so it's burning rocket fuel that gives it its gas and actually as this goes up into space what happens is the rocket boosters and the tank will fall off and the glider keeps on going and that's actually how it lands i'm well. laughing because there are so many people being like i'm still giggling that was hilarious can you do it again uh it was absolute <laughs> carnage people who just put in 
crying faces. <laughs> really? Um, all right, so that you've described uh, yeah. that. That's the space so this shuttle. Is the space shuttle, but actually, Tim Peake. He went to a space in a slightly different rocket. He went up in the in the Soyuz rocket. And we've got a video to show you uh, just here. A second service tower separation. Okay, so this is the rocket uh, that Tim Peake went up to space in. But actually, the astronauts are in a tiny capsule right at the top. You see where the Let's Go Live logo is? That's where they are. The rest of the rocket really is, uh, is, is, the, is the fuel tank. And in there we have special chambers where the fuel tank, the fuel is released and burnt. Should we see the launch? Yeah, definitely. Okay, here comes the rest of the launch. sky out of the atmosphere and eventually it will make its way to space that was really really awesome right. okay now i'm ready to launch a rocket okay so this means we've reached the time where we're going to show you how to make your own rockets at home yes all right um we're going to show you how to make three rockets yep. and this is the first one all you're going to need is to say two are powered by air the third one uh, could get a little bit messy because it's a fizzy chemical reaction it is um so this first one you can do indoors anywhere you like and you're going to need a paper straw if you don't have a paper straw you can just roll up a piece of paper and make your own tube good okay then what you want to do is get a strip of paper and then roll it around the end of your paper straw like this so i've just rolled another piece of paper into a tube so it fits over the end and then what i've done is i folded that tube of paper over and i've put some sticky tape there so what i've done is i've created a sealed cap so that is now going and it's not going anywhere so if i take this off what you want to do now is decorate is decorate your own rocket and stick it to this cap so here are some that we made earlier hey! I, I was trying to find my i think the Look balloon i think the balloon incident earlier knocked it off oh really I found okay, it. Here we go. That's what I was looking for. Here it is. These are our rockets. So actually, you can see that all I've done is I've just attached the little paper rocket that I drew, and I've stuck it to the cap, and here we go. So these are powered by air. So what's going to happen is we can blow into the straw. The air is going to uh, find its way to the end, but it won't be able to escape because of the sealed cap. So pressure will build up until the air finds its way out. It will rush downwards, and the rocket will go up. Got it. Okay, should we, should we give it a go? Yep, I think we'll right, yeah. get, get low, ready? Okay, three. Hang on, hang on, I'm going right now. Three. So we're gonna blow oh. through the tube and it's gonna, basically all that air is just gonna push the rocket straight up. Okay, are you ready? Mm -hmm. Three, two, one. Oh no, mine's too yeah. tight. Hang on, I've had a failed launch. Going again. Three, three two, one, blast off. Yes. Oh, it hit me on the head. This is fun. Three, two, one. Okay, so that's that's design number one. What's design number two, Maddie? Okay, so for design number two and three, we actually went outside, and here's what happened. Yes! This is our washing line rocket. If you don't have a washing line, you could take a bit of string and you could put it between two chairs. You could do that inside as well as outside. And then what you're gonna need is a paper straw or a biodegradable straw. Uh, if you don't have a straw, you could use a bit of penne pasta, you know, the tube ones. So you cut a bit of that straw off, you thread it onto your line, you put a bit of sticky tape on it, then you need a balloon. We've actually drawn a rocket design on this balloon. Okay, <laughs> let's blow it up. <gasps> Not too much. <laughs> right, now you need to stick your balloon to your sticky tape. Don't let go of the end. It kind of works best if you do it as close to the end as possible, like that. Okay, so far so good. Now, stand behind it, pull the string nice and tight, and what's gonna happen is when I let go, all the air that's inside this balloon is going to rush out in this direction. We're going to get an equal and opposite force in that direction. Okay, all right. Are we ready? Mads, you all set? Yeah. Three, two, one. Yeah, that was good. That went well. You could always set up two lines and have a little race and you can refill. Go again. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Finally, we're making fizzy rockets. And for this, you're going to need an empty fizzy vitamin tablet tube, two fizzy vitamin tablets and some warm water. That's all you need. So get uh, your two vitamin tablets and break them into four pieces. And then you can put those four pieces into oh, the so cap. E each one into two? Yeah, well it doesn't really matter. Just make sure oh, that you are pushing two fizzy vitamin tablets. I see it. I can't put make that a mess. in. That's okay. <laughs> Once you've loaded your cap with your fuel, you want to get your empty tube. Here we go. Thanks. And fill it to a quarter. So that's about there with warm water. We've already done that with ours. And of course, decorate them like rockets if you want to. Mine is called Gassy Galactic. Oh, and mine upside down right now, but it's called the Fizzy 2 because you're using two fizzy vitamin tablets. All that's left to do is put the cap onto the tube turn it upside down and we should have lift off but why is that going to happen well the fizzy vitamin tablets will react with the warm water and they'll release a gas called carbon dioxide but that gas doesn't have anywhere to go because it's inside a sealed tube so the pressure will build and build and build until the gas forces its way out pushing the lid down and the rocket up or at least that's what should happen. Should we do it? Yeah. Okay, here goes. Okay, go. Gassy Galactic Three. ready for launch. And then lean back. No! <laughs> Why is my not going? Ah! Oh, that one was so good. Yours went so much higher. That was amazing. That went really well. <laughs> Better right in there, which is what we love. <laughs> so just to recap, yeah. uh, the way that these work is you're blowing air up yeah. and essentially it gets stuck at the top. The pressure builds at the top of the tube and then eventually it pushes the rocket there up. We go. So that's your air that's pushing it up. Mm -hmm. um, then we had the balloon and it was... Some people say it's the, the air rushing out of the balloon that pushes it forwards. Other mm -hmm. people say it's unbalanced forces in the balloon actually opening that pushes it forwards. And then the third one was a chemical reaction creating gas, yeah. right? Building that force up. And then suddenly it was enough to push that cap off and shoot up. Yeah. And that's what you get in the rocket. All that gas produce, produce, produce an explosion, pushing it up. Right. Um, that was so much fun. And actually, you lot at home have already been making rockets and practicing uh, your astronaut training as well. So we've got some photos to show you very quickly before we wrap up the show. Um, Daniel and Andrew have had loads of fun in their rocket this weekend. They even had Buttons the Cat to help out on all of their missions. That's a space cat, that is. Be care yeah. Beware of the space cat. Uh, this is Ellie wearing a huge astronaut suit. Uh, she wants to be an astrophysicist when she grows up. Nice. Hopefully she'll fit in the suit by then. Uh, Murray has his entire Mars Lego set built. It's all ready for liftoff. Uh, here we go. This is Finley and Arlo. They've been busy catching UFOs. Amazing. <laughs> amazing, amazing costumes. Uh, David is space mad. He built his own rocket to match with his space top and trousers. Uh, Miranda has had lots of fun. Looks like she's made her own rocket and painted it. That looks like that's from various tubes, cardboard tubes yeah. she's found around the house. Yeah. Thank you nice so much. one. Uh, tomorrow, we would love to see your own homemade rocket. So, if you do manage to, uh, if you've got a garden, you can go out there, or if you can got a little balcony, you can launch them on there, or even in the, in the lounge if they're not mm -hmm. too messy. Uh, do send <laughs> us a photo. Here is the email address. Okay. Hello, let's go live at gmail.com. What should they put in the subject mm, this time, Matt? Use the subject heading blast off. Blast off. Yeah, and then we'll know you're sending us pictures about rockets. Yes, That'd be awesome. that is a good shout. Go but on. we do have two very exciting things to tell you. And the first is an activity that you might want to do later this afternoon. So ISET, that's the International Space School Educational Training, they're starting a series of live astronaut events called Space to Learn. And the first one is going to take place this afternoon at two o'clock uh, our time here in uh, in England. Um, so this is going to be perfect for training astronauts. There's going to be a live link up with NASA astronaut Steve Swanson. He's a space shuttle astronaut and an ISS commander. I that's, should say UK time, by the way. That's very cool. <laughs> yeah. um, and one other thing you can do is tonight, go outside uh, and look up, if you can, at the moon. Depends on the clouds, but if you can see the moon, it's going to be a full moon tonight. So you should be able to see this glorious glorious sight uh, it's a full moon because it's fully lit by the sun but it's a, 
an extra special moon tonight. It's called a super moon. So the moon travels around, it orbits around the Earth, uh, not in a perfect circle, in a squashed circle, we call an ellipse, uh, which means that every now and again it gets the closest that it will ever be to Earth, mm -hmm. uh, and that is tonight. The ah. closest it will be this year is tonight. So it's gonna be super close. We call it a super moon. It will look a little bit bigger. Full. It's gonna be amazing. And just Go a, a reminder look. that links to all of the things we're mentioning are in the description box below this video. So today we oh. trained as astronauts and we made our own rockets. Yes. So tomorrow we're going to be finding out what life is like in space for an astronaut. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to tomorrow. Yes. Um, as always, if this has been useful, if it's hoping, if it's hoping, if it's helping uh, with lockdown and homeschooling, please do share it with people. Uh, if you're watching back, hello, thank you for watching thank back later so in the day. Uh, a quick uh, hello to a few other people. Carlotta um, from the UK, hi. Yeah, we've got B, uh, who's in Cambridge. Who else? Uh, Loving the t-shirt, yeah, retro. Uh, <laughs> Juliet and Alex, hello, lovely to have you with in us. Northern Ireland. Hi to Caitlin and Emily. Uh, Oliver in Waterlooville. And Jacob in North Wales. Yeah, and Lucas with Jacob there as well. Hi, oh, Lily. Lily, we've got so many, so many people getting in touch. Thank you all, as always. Yeah. Well, we'd better say goodbye, Wish I guess. Indeed. Subscribe, uh, yeah. click that bell for notifications, for notifications, and we will see you tomorrow at 11 a.m. <laughs> what are we like? It's been, this has been so much <laughs> it's been fun. A fun one. See you tomorrow at 11. Stay curious. Bye for home. Bye. Bye.